What up guys, welcome back to another hitting tips video. This time we are going to be diving way deeper into it. I'm gonna be going over stuff that I forgot to go over the first time. Also, the reason I wanted to do this is because now I have a PC set up, I have a better camera, I have better mic, I have a way more advanced setup than I did when I first did my original one. Also, a lot of you guys weren't subbed to me at that time, so I don't know if you guys maybe got to see it, but there's a lot of stuff I would like to go over that may be better for this game. Also, it's post-patch, plus we have a bunch of new players that we didn't get to use before, so I'll be going over how I build my lineup, which guys I think are best to uh, kind of build your team around, and I'll pretty much be going over everything. So um, let's start out with my settings. So for my hitting settings, um, I start with zone. That's what basically all of the top players use. Zone is what uh, means that you're using your PCI, the yellow indicator in the middle, and you're moving it to decide where basically you want your batter to swing. So you're trying to aim that directly on the ball. You're trying to get the ball in the middle of that PCI. That much you guys probably know, but just in case anybody doesn't, that's the best way to do it. If you want to get good at hitting, it's best to practice zone. Uh, use buttons. I'm sure a lot of you use buttons. You could also use analog, but I think that buttons is a lot easier. It lets you focus on the harder stuff opposed to having to stride and swing your bat. Uh, my PCI appearance, I used reticle, but I also switched to wedge depending on how I'm feeling. Reticle is good with these faster pitch speeds because you get kind of more of a clear vision on the ball and where it's going and to me it just helps basically watching the pitchers release and everything a lot clearer so if you're a beginner i suggest you start using reticle and once you get more advanced you can start going towards wedge to where you have the little indicator in the middle that you can use specifically to aim on the ball for hitting view i like to use strike zone it gives me the best batter's eye view and it's the best way for me to read the pitches properly um, this is something that you can go into creative practice and just work on and test out different strike zones so you can see how you like it. But uh, strike zone seems to be the consensus pick around everybody. So I suggest you definitely give it a try. So I'll dive into this real quick. It's something that a lot of people have gone over when they're talking about their hitting tips. But challenge of the week is a great way to practice hitting if you're not quite feeling it or you're a little rusty or if you just haven't played. Um, it's a great way to practice, mainly because it's a mode where you can play and as you go on in the game mode, it, it increasingly gets harder and harder by going up in difficulty. You start with rookie and you end on legend and it helps you get a sense of timing up different pitchers as well as making consistent contact and not striking out. It's a great way to get warmed up before a ranked seasons game. It's also a great way to just practice getting good. Uh, custom practice is another thing that you can do. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have been in here before. If you haven't, then I suggest you at least try it out. But basically, you can pick what batter you want to use, and you can pick the pitchers that you want to face. And you can set up your own custom practice, uh, basically different scenarios, uh, different difficulties. If you're struggling against like Chris Sale, for example, and you keep seeing guys use Chris Sale, you can put your situation against Chris Sale and practice maybe trying to score guys from third with less than two outs, practice clutch hitting, stuff like that. It's a good way to put yourself in situations that you usually struggle with. That way you can practice with it and make yourself better in that aspect. So custom practice is definitely a good way to go. Also can help you get your timing down, all of that. It's a good thing to do before you uh, dive right into the online gameplay. Now, one thing that I forgot to talk about initially in my first video is the accessories that I use in order to help me uh, perform at my highest level in this game. First of all, you're going to want a monitor. A monitor is basically like a computer monitor hooked up to your PlayStation so you have a faster response time and less input lag. It may not seem like that big of a deal, but when you're using these TVs, I mean, it made me quit one year in 2013 because I was using a TV and I didn't know what was wrong. I was curious why I was so bad all of a sudden after being so good in 2012. But once I bought a monitor, it was it was just a whole nother ball game. I mean, as soon as you make that decision to swing the bat, you're making that decision in the video game. Sometimes on TV, it'll process late and it'll screw up your at bat. Having a monitor with a one millisecond response time or anything around that is definitely key to 
bringing out your full potential while playing. Also, one of these is definitely huge for your uh, gaming experience. This is a control freak. You set it right here on your analog stick. And basically it helps you with precision aiming when you're uh, using your PCI. It makes it where you don't make drastic movements in your PCI and you can aim slowly and I mean not slowly you're still trying to get the PCI there fast but you can make more precise movements and it helps a lot. I like to use the low rise vortex uh, vortex control, control freak. A lot of people like to use the green CQCs. It's really all up to preference but I suggest you buy some and try it out. Um, it's definitely something that can help you get a lot better in this game. So with all that being said, it's time to go over my lineup so I can show you guys the approach I like to take to help me uh, perform at the best of my capability. So I like to keep a lineup that has a consistent platoon advantage. And also I like to keep a lineup that is somewhat speedy. So if I'm ever in a tough situation and I need to get a guy in scoring position, whether it's a ninth inning and I'm in a bad situation. I like to get guys that I know can move around the bases, whether it's staying out of double plays or stealing a bag or scoring from third tagging up. That's something that's important to me. So um, with that being said, this is my lineup. I got Romerto Alomar batting leadoff. The reason for this is because he's a switch hitter who I'm very comfortable with. I love his batting stance. I used his batting stance for my uh, created player for a very long time. So it's just a batting stance that I'm really used to. And the fact that he's a switch hitter means I always have the platoon advantage to lead off the game or at the top of my order getting the most at bats. He's also speedy, so I could get him over. I could steal a bag if I need to. To me, he's a very good leadoff hitter to have. Second is Willie Mays. I have him batting second because not only is he one of the best cards in the game, but he's the player that I think I perform the best with. And I'm a huge advocate for having your best player batting second or the hitter that your best hitter batting second. I've always thought that's a good rule. Um, and that's why I have him there because he's always either scoring Roberto Alomar, getting him over, or just getting in scoring position for the heart of the order. So, I mean, I just love him batting second. Chipper Jones batting third. He's an absolute goon. You can see my stats with him. I'm batting 415 after 147 at bats, 22 home runs. He's a huge, huge reason why I've been successful lately. Him being a switch bat, batting third is huge because when I get those guys in a scoring position, I'll always have the platoon advantage at third. Also, if I'm facing a righty per se, it goes uh, lefty, righty, lefty. So I'm always uh, staying consistent every other batter. Then I got Ken Griffey Jr. batting fourth. The reason I have him batting fourth is because if somebody puts in a lefty against him, they'll have to fake face Frank Thomas with a lefty or make a pitching change. So I like to keep them always on their toes with their bullpen. And that's something that I find to be a, a really good strategy in this game because a lot of people like to pick their matchups and they'll overthink it. They'll take out a guy after one batter and that immediately puts you at an advantage. But Ken Griffey Jr., he has good pop. Can't be mad at him batting cleanup. Same with Frank batting fifth. I'm sure a lot of you guys know about Frank, but he hits absolute tanks. I wouldn't mind you having Lou Gehrig here, switching up the order a little bit, but I liked Frank Thomas. Um, Jorge Posada, not a lot of people have him. He is my best hitter as of right now. Willie Mays has been my most consistent throughout this whole game, and his speed keeps him batting second. But Jorge Posada at the bottom of this lineup is what has kept me going. He's been 408. He's hitting an unbelievable amount of home runs. I mean, he's just amazing. And I simply have him this low just because of the platoon the platoon thing. If, it, if that didn't matter, he'd probably be batting cleanup for me or something like that. But I'm sure I'll find a way to squeeze him and get him up there. But it's kind of a thing where it's like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Because him batting six has worked perfectly for me. Tony Gwynn's batting seventh. He could be higher in the order. Uh, to me, he's like a second leadoff hitter when I, uh, if I go uh a hit list in the first two innings per se and he leads off the seventh i'm still giving myself a good advantage to score some runs if i get him on base he's fast he can steal the bags and he's just matchup proof somebody could put in chapman against him and i'm still going to be confident so that's a very good guy to have in your lineup and eighth i have my creative player handsome squidward he uh he's a switch hitter i mean you obviously know creative players are tailored to your own 
personal preferences. So, I mean, I got him set up exactly how I want him. Having him batting eighth is just a bonus because I have no weak spots in my lineup and I'm confident no matter who's up. But I try to get a lot of switch hitters in here and a lot of speedy guys. And to me, that's what helps me uh, have the best chance at winning. When it comes to my bench, I make sure to have a guy that can catch because for one, I've been used to the last few years of having to have a guy like that in case my catcher got injured. I don't even think it's like that anymore. I don't think they can possibly get injured, so there's no need to have it. But I like to have him in there simply because if I need a pinch run for Jorge in a clutch situation with either Ricky Henderson or Kenny Lofton, then I can put in Pudge after to take his spot. Also, if I need him as a pinch hitter, he can rake against both hands, so there's really no reason to not have a guy like that on your bench. Rogers Hornsby is one of the best players in the game. He should be in everybody's starting lineup. It's a shame that I can't fit him in mine, but I'd be damned if he's not going to be on my bench. He can hit both hands very well, and he's just a great player to have. For Ricky Henderson and uh, Kenny Lofton, when I'm facing a lefty with Ricky Henderson, I feel like I can take over the world. He's a great hitter against lefties, just as Kenny Lofton is a great hitter against righties. He has a glitchy swing where he can always get hits, so I don't mind pinch hitting with these guys, but these guys also serve as emergency base runners, which is huge for me with getting uh, offensive production consistently because if I ever need a situation where I have a slow guy on first, I don't even have to stress about it. I just throw him in, try to score him with a gap or whatever. And then Giambi, he's just there First off my bench against a righty, hopefully hit a jack with him, hopefully get on base with him. He's a monster hitting. He's replaceable. You could put in somebody like Gehrig, but you want to have a nice power lefty there. It could be Duke Snyder. It could be anybody, but he's my power lefty that I've been using. So that's my lineup. That's the reason why I'm using my team. Now let's get down to the in-game strategy. Okay, we're playing Sunny Moon 7-7. The first thing I like to do is see what pitcher I'm facing. I'm facing James Paxson. That's somebody I've never faced before, so the only thing I can prepare for is facing a lefty. So I'm gonna keep in mind that my strong spots are gonna be the top of my order. I'm gonna try to get on base, move guys over for guys like Frank Thomas, Chipper, in order for them to hit them in. Hopefully Ken Griffey can get a nice lefty-lefty groove going this game. So right off the bat, some of the things I like to do, right? With my PCI, a lot of people like to start it in a specific area when they're first hitting. They'll maybe move it right here, or they'll move it low. More often than not, they're setting it somewhere where they, uh, where they struggle the most hitting. I like to keep mine directly in the middle. The reason I keep mine directly in the middle is because, wow, that was a missile, is because um, I like to not stay biased to any side. Sometimes if I start up here, I may drop too low when they throw with a pitch, I might overreact, or um, I may just automatically get excited when I see a pitch is near that area, even if it's not a strike, and I'll swing prematurely or something like that and mess up my bat. So I like to keep it even keel, just stay right in the middle, and just use pure instincts to react to where the ball's thrown. So obviously it didn't go that good right there, but that's basically the approach I like to take. I like to keep my PCI right in the middle. When I'm hitting and I'm watching the pitcher throw, I'm looking for fastball. See, I timed it up with good timing. I just didn't get my PCI quite on it. But I like to, um, it's another hard hit ball. It's okay, sometimes innings will go like that. But what I like to do is I like to expect fastball and then adjust to off speed. That's something that people do in real life and that's something you wanna do in this game as well. If you're on that fastball and you're making sure it's not getting getting blown by you, there you can't have a pitch blown by you. I mean, that, it's as simple as that. It's all about being able to adjust to off speed while being able to prevent balls from being blown by you. So what you want to practice is being early or good timing on those fastballs while also practicing uh, balancing it and countering it when somebody throws a slow stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> it's an ending inning double play. That's tough. Okay, so this inning I'll try to walk you step through step without getting too extracted too distracted with explaining. Okay, so now there's fastball knuckle curve cutter sinker change. There we go. Should be double. There we go. 
So right there, I kind of figured that he was going to at least come with a little hard stuff uh, inside. That's how people usually approach the lefties. Um, that's what he started off with the first two pitches. And then he tried to fool me with the changeup when it was 0-2. Luckily, we were on it. Oh, my God. It's... Good, good, 102. <laughs> it may be one of those games, but it's fine, as long as we go over the tips. Wow. We're hitting everything hard, so. Okay, so it's the third inning. I've been hitting the ball very hard, but they've resulted in an outs, which results in him only have thrown 14 pitches and it's the third inning. So sometimes I'll switch up my approach mid game in order to kind of counter what's been happening in the game. His pitcher's at 14 pitches, which means his confidence is gonna be high because he hasn't given up any hits and he's been getting out of innings quick. So I'll start my at bats by waiting until he throws a strike and basically after he throws that strike, only waiting for that specific pitch to hit. I'm waiting for that one mistake. That's how I'm gonna approach this bottom of the third. We're starting off with Tony Gwynn, so we're gonna wait to see uh, what pitch he throws. And the benefit of this is we also get to kind of get to see a pattern on how he's throwing. So we've noticed that he's throwing a lot of first pitch sinkers. Okay, so now it's 1-1. I'm gonna only look for the pitch that I wanna hit. We got a hit hittable pitch. I unfortunately didn't time it up as well as I could have, but we, um, Yeah, see, we just missed it with our PCI. That's not good PCI placement. We're going to keep the same approach. Okay, started us with the change up that time. 01 count. Look for something to drive. You'll see me check swing a lot because I'm just anticipating that fastball and I'm getting ready to smack it. Me check swinging is me just holding up after recognizing it's either a ball or an off speed. I like to move my PCI around a little bit to keep my, uh, wow, what a dot. Can't, nothing you can do about that. But, um, it keeps my thumb loose, so I'm ready to move my, uh, ready to move my thumb in any single direction that I need to in order to make, uh, the best PCI placement. This is a pitcher that can hit, so he's never free out. You still want to have a good at-bat with him. Okay, so I have the top of my order right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play this inning. I'm gonna try to lock in and I'm gonna hope that you guys watch closely and see the tendencies that I'm having, see what pitches I'm taking, what pitches I'm looking for, and kind of how I'm moving my PCI accordingly. If I feel like I need to say something, then I'll say it, but let's try to use this inning to make this a better game. Right there, I know I said that I was gonna take it until I got a strike. I was noticing a pattern where he was throwing a first pitch ball and then when it was 1-0, he was coming down the middle with a hard thing. That's why, as you can see, I kind of saw it was coming and so I took advantage of it. So we get one run back and we need to get a lot more than that. 1-1 one one. One, one count. Two, one. We're gonna look for something hard in the middle or down. Okay. I'm gonna let him throw this pitch. I'm gonna take all the way right now because I know that uh, his pitch counts not as high as it could be. Luckily, that's a pitch we could have grounded out if we were swinging away. Luckily, we uh, took it. Now, remember what I said about Griffey or lefty lefties. A lot of people are gonna try to come inside, so you gotta be prepared for that. See, he's pounding inside. We're prepared for it, so we're able to watch it. He doesn't have a slider, but he could go cutter outside or hard stuff in. Um, okay. Good. It's not always easy to get a hold of, even if you know it's coming.
These are all extra pitches he has to throw. Full count. I'm okay with fouling it off all day. <laughs> That's fine. This is okay. This is completely okay. We can do it all day. These are good at-bats, boys. And then we get the walk. That is a good at-bat. We used a bunch of his pitches, and we get a guy on first and second with Frank up against the lefty. That is your ideal at-bat. Waste a bunch of pitches, get his confidence down, and then get your main guy up. Let's see if we can capitalize. First pitch strike, that was rare. Ooh, nice cutter inside, that was disguised. Ooh, we were just a little ahead of that. Probably a change up here. Oh, we called it right, we hit it right, but unfortunately it's just a deep line out. Get the guy over in case there's a pass ball or something like that or a wild pitch. Yeah, we called it right. We just didn't get our PCI on it correctly, but... All right, let's go, Jorge. Let's get at least one of these runs in. 2-0. I'm gonna, I'm gonna swing away here and hope I get a pitch to hit. <sighs> we did. I was just a little early on it. But you get the idea, right? It's... We had to swing there because that was most likely the time we were going to get a good pitch, just like right now. All right, we get walked. So now we have Tony Gwynn up. This is one of the reasons why I have this man on the bench. We're going to try to take advantage of the situation right now, get a platoon advantage because these are important runs on base. He didn't throw it. He threw a fastball. We were still on it. Unfortunately, we didn't hit it hard enough. It's fine. We get a run. We wasted some pitches. Get his confidence down. Show him that we can have good at-bats. Okay, now as the game goes on, you should be able to be able to recognize your opponent's patterns a little bit more. So hopefully you're getting fooled a little less as you're hitting. So he put in Rolly Fingers. Rolly Fingers has a sinker, which means he's probably going to be coming inside a lot. And we're going to have to be getting our bat around a little quicker. We got a hanging change up that we were kind of looking for because he was throwing the fork ball a lot. We were able to read it, kind of recognize a pattern and adjust to it, and then fortunately smack that ball and make it a two run game. Now the hit column doesn't show that we've been hitting well, but the contact we've been making shows we've been having good at bats. That's all that matters. And like I said, he just, like I said earlier in the lineup screen when I was showing you guys my team build, this guy overthought it put in a lefty against the one batter. After this, he's gonna have to face a bunch of righties. All right, here we go. He has to deal with the consequences of facing Frank. And it's a line out. Okay, we have three innings to score two runs. That's a mentality I like to keep, to keep myself hopeful and optimistic. All I need is a run this inning. It could be a solo jack, or it could be just getting guys on base and moving them. So against Chapman, like I said, we're expecting fastball, then I'm going to adjust to off speed. Right there, we hit it well. Is that caught? Okay, thank God. Now, this is a situation like I was talking about with Kenny Lofton and Ricky Henderson. I used Ricky Henderson, so I'm going to save him and not pinch run for him yet and just hope that I don't hand it into a double player that I can get him over to third somehow. He puts in a righty, so we get him to waste Chapman on three batters. Hopefully we can still get around on something with Ricky Henderson, even though it's a righty. Some days the luck's against you. No matter what contact you make, sometimes bad stuff happens. You hit into a double play with a 99 speed, it's tough. It's very tough. Not much you can do about it. And luckily, we get a hold of that fastball on the inside, and we smack it with Handsome Squidward. Now, look at where my PCI was. Look where the ball was, and look where the PCI was. As you can see, 
because we kept our PCI in the middle and weren't biased, we were able to come inside like that. That's a hard ball to get around on. That's an absolutely hard ball to get around on. So I would like to tie it up with Giambi and show you guys why I have him on my bench. That'll do. Hit a nice laser, get him in a scoring position. See, good, good, 108. We've been making great contact all game. That's what sucks about this. You look at the, you look at the hit column and the story doesn't add up, you know? Because a lot of his hits were blue pits and he had, he had a few home runs to get, a few solo home runs to get him to four runs. So it's like, it looks like we're getting dominated, but we've been pitching so well this game and we've been making hard contact and we only have six runs to, sh or six hits to show for it. But we're going to keep it positive and try to still make the comeback. Now, a single won't normally score Giambi, so I'm thinking about pinch running for him. But um, I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. I might need these guys later on in the game. So we're going to try to hit a home run or a double here. Wow, that's an absolute dot. That's a good pitch. He pitched so well that whole at bat. Is that dropping? Oh man, that was close. If we don't come back this game, I will give away $100 to a random subscriber. You have my word. I wanted to be aggressive there. So we did it. In there too. Get that run back real quick. He was used to me being patient, trying to get it, take advantage of it, get easy strikes. I wasn't letting him. We move the runner over, the job gets done, that's fine. We're okay with that. My clutches hitters up. Let's go, Jorge. Let's get it done. I'm gonna look to try to punish a sinker or a hanging slider. That's a good pitch. Is it fair? That is clutch hitting at its finest. At its finest. Take the lead in the bottom of the eighth. That's how you go out like a G, baby. That's why I have Jorge Posada batting sixth. Switch hitting batter at the bottom of my lineup to provide that spark we need, baby. Got him. <laughs> I'm cold blooded. And we clutch it out. We get the dub in our hitting tips video. I did not want to go out with a dud. I did not want to lose and only have three hits. I'm glad that I was able to put on a decent display of hitting towards the end of the game and show patience and show that we were willing to come back. Luckily, everything goes right. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Before you leave, make sure to leave a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you haven't, and leave in the comments below what you would like to see next, or maybe ask some questions that maybe I didn't go over that you would like to know about hitting. Ask away. Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate you guys for coming by. I'll see you guys very soon, and uh, I got something special coming up for you guys soon. So make sure to stay tuned. All right?